Today for science, we're gonna continue our unit on natural disasters and talk about the current wildfires we're experiencing here in Oregon. Other states, including California and Washington, are heavily affected by fires as well. So I'm gonna share my screen here and give you some updates. So this is an article on the OPB website uh, published today, Tuesday, September 15th, 2020. And so Oregonians have to wait a bit longer for smoky skies to clear. So a week after the fires exploded onto the Western Oregon landscape, forcing thousands from their homes and scorching hundreds of homes, fire officials see reasons for optimism. That's a good sign. But they said recovery will take patience and leveraging resources. The number of total deaths remain uncertain after reports that at least one presumably presumed fatality may have been misidentified. Oregon officials say that they will clarify and confirm numbers later today. The weather is not cooperating. That means smoke should still stick around through the end of this week. Officials report the dense smoke has limited the ability of aircrafts to assist in fighting the fires. An air quality advisory for the Northwest has been extended through at least this Friday. People are experiencing short-term health problems made uh, when dealing with this much smoke. So what does prolonged smoke uh, mean for your health? So here's a article to check out. So I'm gonna share this link with you so that you can explore that a little bit more. Um, and here are some of the other links to the air quality index. So I'll show you that as well as the Canada interactive map that shows you the smoke moving. So I'll show you those next. So here's airnow.com and I looked up Beaverton. So um, here's Portland. We're, so we're in the very unhealthy range, um, which means between 200 and 300 um, in air quality on the index. And then here is the, so Canada has a map. So this is from uh, today. So I'll let it play through for you. You can see the amount of smoke being affected. Here's some parts, particles of air quality. So still a really big hot spot right here. We are hoping for that weather system that we saw on the COIN6 weather forecast for later this week, Thursday and Friday, we are hoping to get more rain. The rain that was expected yesterday into today was only on the coast. So unfortunately we did not get enough precipitation from that. So let's now jump to a quick air quality update. The morning streets of downtown Portland were deserted. Smoky air from the fires caused the air quality index to surge past 500, making it the worst in the world. I can't breathe. Um, I it kind of makes my brain a little foggy. Maybe my head hurt a little bit. Uh, I'm kind of over it too. I just want it to go away. At least 10% of the state's residents live in evacuation zones meaning thousands have had to flee their homes for shelters like this one in the city of Salem, run by the Red Cross and Marion County. Have you seen anything like this before? Never. On average, we're seeing about a few hundred coming and going throughout the day. At the shelter, I met Elise and Tim Durlip, who had to evacuate their farm. And where are you sleeping? Right with the dog, right in here. This is our new home. The Durlips moved to one evacuation center, and then due to fire, had to evacuate from that one, too. That's no small task, especially since the Durlams moved their most valuable possessions with them, sheep. There's no question about it. I would not have left them. 
I would not have left them. I would not have left my dogs or my cats under any circumstances. These guys are my family. I treat them as such. The last one that I happened to lose cost me $500 to have him shipped to a cemetery to be buried. This is how much I care about these animals. And inside these pavilions, there are hundreds of animals, horses, pigs, and these cute little goats. And if you walk over here, you'll find even more uh, unique animals being taken care of, including an alpaca and a llama. Our first concern was getting the animals out safely, and the rest is just stuff. And they kind of help you get through this too, right? They do. They do. Because they give me hope for the future. No matter what, I hope my flock will be here. I hope my flock will continue. Some of my friends have stepped up and have said that if something happens and my farm is burned out, I have no fences, I have no barn, that they will take my flock and they will breed them and keep them and keep the flock going for me. So I'm, I'm confident that these guys are my future. So many lives continue to be uprooted being forced to make split-second decisions on what they can or cannot live without. <laughs> Mark New, CGTN, Salem, Oregon. Okay. So again, here is the website that kind of gives you some more information. They have um, some specifics about each of the fires. If you scroll down so you can look at um, how many acres have been affected. So the Brayton fire um, is now at 30,000 acres and that's in Lake County and it's 0% contained. Um, the Archie Creek fire um, in Ro east of Roseburg and the Archie. So that one is 15% contained in 120,000 acres. The Beachy Creek fire um, evacuation orders were a big deal there in Marion County as firefighters were trying to fight at the front lines. Um, and now it is at 200 thousand acres and is only 15% contained as of this morning. Here's a picture of evacuees from the Riverside Fire staying in tents at the Milwaukee Portland Elks Lodge on Sunday. The Holiday Farm Fire um, is over 166,000 acres and just 6% contained. The Riverside Fire has now reached 130,000 acres and is 0% contained as of this morning. Uh, the fire line is along Highway 242. And then Lion's Head Fire is at 168,000 acres and about 5% contained as of this morning. So there's still quite a few fires going. Let me give you the last three. Um, Almeida Fire is in still some level three zones for evacuation. Um, and there's been no changes to the evacuation zones yet. The fire is 100% contained as of this morning. So that's a really good sign that's in Southern Oregon. Um, Albinchin fire um, is um, at 32,000 acres and 20% contained as of this morning. And then the Echo Mountain Complex, uh, 2,500 acres and 35% contained as of this morning. Um, they're hoping that the rain will help out with that. So Kate Brown has done some updates. I will link her update to this video if you'd like to check it out. It's about an hour long though. Um, so here's a photo, a view of downtown Portland from the East Bridge. Um, this was Monday, yesterday. The entire Portland metro area region remains under a thick blanket of smog from wildfires that are burning around the state and residents are being advised to remain indoors due to the hazardous air quality. So I just want to encourage you to stay inside as much as you can through the end of this week. 
Um, we're not even taking our dog on walks and that sort of thing. So make sure you have a mask on if you have to go outside, if you're collecting the mail or doing anything like that, um, make sure you're safe. So the priority is to keep updated. Um, check the link I clicked below. Um, I can also show you one more thing, which is the, um, the radar map. That was the one thing I did not show you. So this is the evacuation map for our area. So as you can see, the map changes. Um, oops, it's a big zoom in, but so uh, Newburg, here we are in Beaverton. So the level one and level two um, is slightly changing, but here's the Beach She Creek fire that I read you about the riverside and the lion's head which are affecting us the most in this area so i'll link all of these down below i want to thank you for staying safe and keeping that a priority when there's natural disasters like this wildfires are unpredictable so staying alert and ready um, and keeping updated is really important so I look forward to another lesson on Thursday. I'll talk soon. Thanks.